Hey everybody, John Wagnon with Dev Central, and we're coming to you with another Lightboard lesson video. Today we're going to talk about TLS and specifically the speed and efficiency of TLS. And the, the interesting thing is, uh, as websites, as web servers use encryption between the client and the server, uh, you know, a lot of people are going that direction. Dev Central uses it. A lot of a lot of different places use encryption between the client and the server. And, uh, and there's a need for that security. A lot of people uh, rank security as a very uh, highly desirable thing to have, of course, for their web applications. Um, but beyond that, they also uh, love to have the speed and performance of, uh, of, of high-performance web applications. So how can you do both of those things? Because inherently, if you go to secure something, you add all this encryption layer and all the security overhead, then that gives you a performance hit. So the question is, can you still have TLS, which is the encryption piece, and have performance at the same time? Well, there's a guy who works at Google. Um, his name is Ilya Grigoric, and he is like this genius when it comes to web um, efficiencies and web design and all that stuff. And so he, and, and I'm sure he worked with some colleagues and, and all that, but he developed this site called Is TLS Fast? Dot com. And essentially what he said is, hey, if you're going to implement TLS for your web applications, then there are certain things that you can do to enhance the speed and the performance of that TLS uh, experience. And so he outlined several different things. There's seven things, in fact, that he outlined. And I wanted to go over each of those seven things quickly today, explain what they are, and then talk about how the F5 Big IP uh, can, can do great things with respect to those things. So the first thing that he talked about, uh, or that I'll, that I'll mention, is something called session, session identifier. I'll just put session ID right there. So session identifiers, uh, when you have a full TLS handshake bet between the client and the server, uh, that's a very computationally expensive thing to do. The client says, hey server, let's do this secure transaction. The server has to go back and forth with the client to exchange ciphers and all these kinds of things. And so what a session ID allows you to do is it allows the uh, client to store uh, information that was previously used with the server if they're going to have, say, a, a transaction you know, between the same client and the same server that previously happened, the client uh, can store the information. And so that way, when it goes back to say, hey, server, let's have another TLS um, you know, session here, then in the client hello, there's a uh, client hello message that goes between the uh, client and the server. Then there's an extension where you can do this session ID and that can be included. And so the client basically, essentially it says, hey, hey server, we just had this uh, exchange not long ago. Why don't we just use the same session you know, information? And then the server gets that, it's like, okay, no problem because it hasn't been that long. And so we can just use the same stuff. So this, this uh, drastically improves the handshake experience and it drastically improves the timing uh, that it takes to establish this TLS connection between client and server. So session ID is one optional thing that you can implement when it comes to TLS uh, implementation. And so again, that's one of, the, uh, one of the things that you can do inside the client hello uh, to avoid a full handshake um, for future sessions between client and server. The next, the next one that we'll talk about is session tickets. And so I'll put session tickets up here. Session tickets is a, it's, it's a similar thing. It's not exactly the same thing, but that's where the client can store, I'll, set, I'll put a little lock right here, can store all of the um, information that, may, that would have been previously used between a client and a server. Um, and it can store all of that session information on itself, but it uses the server's private key. So I'll say private key, private key from the server encrypts all of the, um, all the cipher negotiation, all the different stuff. And so the server's private key is used to encrypt all of this session information that the client then stores. And so what can happen is if anyone were to steal that, let's say from the client, you're gonna need the server's private key in order to decrypt all that, so that makes it secure. And so what this allows you to do, again in the client hello, the, the client can say, hey server, let me say client hello, let me establish this TLS uh, connection. 
But let me go ahead and give you all, essentially all of the uh, pre-negotiated cipher and all that kind of stuff. And so then the server can use its private key. It can decrypt all of that information and say, hey, you've already got everything you need, so let's do this thing. And so again, it avoids that lengthy uh, uh, handshake for TLS. The, uh, the third thing that I'll mention, and I'll put it right up here, I'll put OCSP stapling. Stapling. OCSP, the online certificate uh, status protocol, is a, uh, it's a situation where when a client connects to a server and it needs to know the status of the certificate of that server, so that server is going to have gone out to a certif certification authority, it's going to have a certificate to say, hey, I am who I say I am, um, but the client needs to know, hey, uh, has that certificate been revoked? Is that certificate still good? Those kinds of things. So there's a couple of different ways to do that. There's a, cer a certificate revocation list, the CRL, which is kind of an older way to do things. And then there's this new one called the, uh, the OCSP, Online Certificate Status Protocol, where a client can, if it needs to know the, uh, the status of a server's, uh, so I'll put the cert right here, then it can go out to an OCSP server. So I'll put OCSP uh, server out here, and it can say, hey, OCSP server, this server's trying to give me the certain certificate. Is it still good? Is it not? That kind of thing. And so then the OCSP server can respond and say, yep, it's good or not. Um, that right there, that whole round, you know, that, that whole discussion between the client and the OCSP server takes time. Um, what if the OCSP server is not online? There's a whole bunch of things that could happen. So what OCSP stapling does, the server actually takes its certificate, it goes out to the OCSP server, so I'm going to put OCSP uh, server out here, and it says, hey, let's go ahead and validate the certificate. So the OCSP server signs this thing. So I'll say sign right here, signs the certificate, sends it back. So then when the server sends its certificate to the client, it can now say, hey, here's my certificate, and it has been signed by the OCSP or by the, um, by the certificate authority uh, it is actually who signs it. And so it essentially staples a, sig a signed OCSP uh, certificate when it sends it to the client. So what this does is it, is it cuts out the need for the client to go out to the OCSP server. So OCSP stapling is, a, is an important thing to do, again, to enhance the, uh, the security experience. Um, the next one I'll talk about is dynamic record sizing. Dynamic record sizing. Okay. When, uh, when the TLS communication happens, it happens via a record protocol. And the, uh, the reality is, is that there is a max record size for TLS of 16 kilobytes. Alrighty. Uh, and the, the word max here is important because uh, if you can imagine for, uh, for certain interactive transactions, there may be some, some initial communication that happens between the client and the server um, that doesn't need the entire you know, huge record uh, that, that could be used. And so maybe a smaller record to increase like buffering and some other uh, problems that could happen if you use these huge records on those initial parts of the communication, um, you should have a smaller record size for those, transac those initial transactions. But then as you get it, let's say you're gonna stream Netflix, you're gonna you watch a big YouTube video, whatever. Once you've kind of established all the connection, now you're into the streaming experience and you wanna have a larger record size because you, know, you, wanna, you wanna give more data uh, you know, during that streaming experience. And so what dynamic record sizing does is it allows you to change the size of the TLS record um, to, you know, to, to change with the need of what you're doing uh, with, that, with that whole communication between the client and the server. So again, this is an optional thing that you could do, dynamic record sizing, but if you do it, it will increase the speed, it'll increase the efficiency of what's going on with the TLS uh, experience. Okay, the next one, that I'll mention quickly, ALPN. And ALPN is uh, the Application Layer Protocol Negotiation is what that stands for. And basically uh, what this does is it says, hey, between client and server, uh, or peer-to-peer -peer, as it were, between, let's say between client and server, let's negotiate beforehand 
what protocol we're going to use to get all this uh, you know, transaction or all this communication going on. So the easy one would be if you're going to use you know, HTTPS, for example, then let's use port 443, all right? But you don't have to do that, but it's nice when both, both peers in this uh, communication can agree beforehand that, hey, let's negotiate that whatever transaction we're doing is going to be on a certain port number, and then that, uh, that will speed things up as well. So that's what ALPN is about. Uh, so you negotiate the protocol uh, prior to all the communication happening. All righty, the next one is uh, forward secrecy. And basically, secrecy, basically what forward secrecy does is um, in, in, the, uh, in the RSA, uh, or I'm sorry, the, the uh, 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 DSA um, key exchange, then you can, you can have a client and a, uh, and a server, and whenever you establish a communication or establish a session, then all of that uh, can be protected by the server's private key. So I'll say private key right here again. All righty, what forward secrecy does is it says we're going to add a layer of protection on that, and typically the Diffie-Hellman key exchange is used to accomplish this, because what it can do is it can say for every single session between client and server, we're going to use a, a, a session uh, key, a session private key, or a different session private key, I should say, so that what this does is uh, if, if someone were to take all of the communication that's going on between client and server and they were to steal it all, but they can't really read it because they didn't have the server's private key, but then later on, you know, a year from now, they've been chunking through trying to find the server's private key, or maybe there's a court case where they can go and, and uh, you know, subpoena this company for the private key, whatever. So anyway, the private key gets turned over. Then they could go back and use that server's private key to decrypt all of that information for every single session. What Forward Secrecy does is every single session that happens is essentially double encrypted. So now it has a, a unique session uh, key that's used to encrypt everything. And so then, if, again, fast forward that same scenario, fast forward in the future, someone were to steal all your information, they don't have your private key, but then they, they steal the server's private key, they still cannot get to your uh, session information unless they have your unique session private key. So anyway, forward secrecy, a great thing to have in terms of uh, protection and uh, you know, security for your, for your information, for your session. And then the very last one, is, uh, is HTTP2, all righty? And this one is an issue where um, you've, you need to be able to, to, um, um, to, to use the HTTP 2.0 uh, protocol. And so, uh, so you can either support that or you can't. All right, so we've, got, we've gone over, uh, and, and I won't go into the whole details of HTTP 2.0. We can, we can uh, get into that maybe in an article or, or a, another Lightboard lesson. Um, so anyway, so all of these things, all seven of these things uh, are what uh, these guys have come together and said, hey, if you will do this stuff, then you can have the security of TLS, but then you can also have the performance that you're really looking for because you don't want to sacrifice performance for security. And so, uh, so they went through and they looked at several different um, application delivery controllers. They looked at different web application of, um, you know, servers, that kind of thing. And sure enough, the F5 big IP, F5, I'll put big IP, is, uh, I'll just put a big old check mark next to it. Because what they did is they looked at several kind of industry um, leading uh, web application providers, that kind of thing and said, hey, how do you score on each one of these? Because not everybody does all of this stuff. Not, even, not everybody even offers the capability to do all of this stuff. But as it turns out, the F5 Big IP, you can do every single bit of this. Again, you don't have to do any of this, um, but, uh, but it's a good idea to do these things. And so anyway, so I'd recommend, you know, as, as this world moves toward encrypting everything, you're gonna have to deal with the issue of TLS. I say the issue, I mean, it's actually a good thing because it secures all your communications. Uh, but as you implement TLS for your web applications, uh, don't, just, don't just throw it out there and, and not know what you're doing. You need, to, you need to implement it in the correct 
and most efficient way possible. And so this is a good, this is a great step in that direction. Um, and again, the F5 Big IP allows you to do every bit of this. So even if you have a web application or a web server on the back end, um, you can front that with a big IP and still accomplish all this stuff. So hope you've learned a couple of things today about TLS and how to make it faster, how to make it more efficient. Uh, so get out there, um, you know, use your F5 Big IP to, uh, to make TLS um, not only secure, but also fast. So thanks for watching today, and we'll see you guys out there in the community.